Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the proof of this result. This result is if you have a compact subset of any matrix space, then it is bounded. So let us consider one matrix first. First, okay. So let X D be a matrix space. X D be a matrix space. So let me show it here. So such matrix space we have. We are calling it as X D. Okay. So let us consider one subset of X A. So I am considering any subset of X A which is compact, right? So let me mention here. Let A subset of X B compact. And now what we have to prove? We have to prove that it is bounded. So let me mention here to prove that A is bounded, right? So let us recall this concept when we can say the set is bounded in a matrix space. Let us uh, discuss the definition of bounded set in real analysis. That means if you have any set on real line, so, which is subset of R A. So set we have. So when we can say that set A is bounded, if there exists a positive real number M such that mod x less than or equal to m for all x belongs to R. So this is definition of bounded set, which is a subset of R with usual metric getting. But now we have a matrix space. So what is definition of bounded set? That definition is there exists. Let me write here. So that definition is there exists a positive real number m such that okay, same like this one such that d of x y must be less than or equal to m for all x belongs to for all x y I should mention for all x y belongs to capital X right then we can say that set a or the, whatever the set we have a then we say the set a is bounded it means if you take any two points their distance distance between these two points must be less than or equal to some positive real number then we say the set is bounded in a matrix space. So this thing we have to prove, right? If the set is finite, if the given set A is finite, that means if it has only n number of elements. So suppose A is equal to A1, A2, A3 and so on n. How many elements it has? n only. Then clearly it is bounded. So let me tell you why. Suppose A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6 only these six elements it has, then what we can do, we can find the distance between two points, the maximum distance we find here getting. So if you consider these two points, you can consider these two points. So I want a maximum distance between any two points of a set. So I will call it as that distance is M. Then obviously the distance between any two points of A is less than or equal to M and we can declare it is bounded set. So let me clearly mention if if A is a finite set, if A is a finite set, then clearly A is bounded. So clearly A is bounded. So now we have to discuss the second case, which is, which is nothing but A is infinite. So let us consider the second case. So consider now consider that A is an infinite set. So now I'm considering the second case that A is infinite, infinite set. Getting that means it has infinitely many elements. And what we have to prove to prove that A is bounded. Now to prove that A is bounded. Okay. So yes, we have to prove A is bounded. So in mathematics, most of the times what we do when we want to prove anything, we assume exactly opposite to that, right? And we write some logical sentences. After a few steps, we get a contradiction and we say we get a contradiction because of our wrong assumption. We rectify our statement and we get the result. Same technique I'm going to use to prove this result. So here I have to prove the set A is bounded. So now I'm assuming a is unbounded. Okay, so let me write here. Let it possible. Let it possible. 
A is unbounded. So I'm considering this uh, thing unbounded. Okay, so now I'm considering set is unbounded. So let me remove that part, just make a screenshot of it. Okay, see set is unbounded means what? See when we draw set like this, so normally in my, uh, our mind we have a bounded set, getting? So the set is unbounded, that means uh, our set will be like this, okay? Set is like this, set is unbounded. So that means on that side, there is no limit. We can go anywhere, getting? So such type of set we have. So unbounded set we have. So now I'm going to consider, construct a sequence. Let x1 belongs to A. So I'm selecting one point x1. So let me show it here. So suppose such point x1 we have. So after that, I will select another point x2. Now, we choose, we choose a point x2 belongs to A such that I am choosing one point x2 but with certain condition. That condition is, let me write here, such that D of x1, x2 must be greater than 1. Okay. So what is the condition? You can take any point x2. I am choosing x2 but distance between x1 and x2 must be greater than 1. After that, I will select next point x3. Now, we choose x3 belongs to A such that uh, with certain condition. That condition is distance between x1 and x3 is greater than distance between x1 and x2 plus 1. It means now I am choosing another point x3. But the condition is distance between x1 and x3 must be greater than distance between x1 and x2 plus 1. That means if you consider this distance and if you add 1 in it, this one must be greater than that. Okay. So after that, again, I'm going to uh, choose one point x4. Now we choose, now we choose one point I'm choosing here x4 belongs to A such that distance between x1, x4 must be greater than distance between x1, x3 plus 1 with same condition okay with same condition now I am choosing one point x4 but what is the condition the distance between x1 x4 must be greater than this distance plus 1 getting this one that means whatever the distance between x1 x3 if you add 1 in it then this one must be greater than that and so on and so on See, we can repeat this procedure infinitely many times. The reason is, first of all, we have a infinite set. Now I'm considering the second case where the set is infinite. So the set has infinitely many elements. And the second thing is, the set is unbounded. So that means there is no limit. You can take any point anywhere, getting? So the set is unbounded. So that's why we can repeat this procedure infinitely many times. So let me write a general statement now. Just make a screenshot of it. So in general, we can write in general, we choose, we choose Xn belongs to A such that in general, we choose a point Xn belongs to A such that, yeah, can you tell me it, it should be distance between X, uh, X1, Xn must be greater than distance between X1, Xn minus 1 plus 1 getting so that means when we choose x4 we consider x3 when we choose x3 we consider x2 similarly when we choose xn we should consider the distance between x1 and xn minus 1 right so therefore and so on i should write and so on and so on so therefore therefore we can write here if you take any m greater than n if you take any m, that means greater than n. So if n is 100, so m can be 101, can be 102, can be 110, 200, 300, whatever, getting? So in that case, we can write definitely distance between x1, xm, getting? Greater than distance between x1, xn plus 1. Getting, getting my point? That means if you, if suppose 
you have n somewhere xn and if you have xm next point we have so obviously this distance plus one or uh, the this distance will be greater than distance between x1 xn plus one by considering the uh, previous conditions we will have this one right so after that what will i do i am going to shift this term on this side so it will have a minus sign so therefore distance between x1 xm minus distance between x1 xn greater than 1 by shifting this term on this side so for all m greater than n right so let me call it as inequality number 1 so do you remember triangle inequality in the definition of matrix space we have seen the last condition is triangle inequality so that triangle inequality i am going to use let me write by triangle inequality by triangle inequality what can we write distance between x1 xm here i am considering three points x1 xn and xm so distance between x1 xm is less than or equal to distance between x1 xn plus distance between xn xm right so let us shift this term on this side so it will have a minus sign let me write it just make a screenshot of it so let us shift this term x1 xn in left hand side so what will you have d of x1 xn so it will have minus sign by shifting it here so d of x1 xn less than or equal to less than or equal to what we have d of xn xm right okay xn xn see that is that is the same inequality can be written as d of xn xm the left, right hand side i am writing in left hand side this is the only thing i am doing greater than or equal to d of x1 xm minus d of x1 xn let me call it as inequality number two so let us combine inequality one and two see what can we write a greater than or equal to b b greater than or equal to c so we can write a greater than or equal to sorry greater than c so let me mention from one and two see here the right hand side and here the left hand sides both of them are same so that's why we can combine these two inequalities so what i should write d of xn xm it is greater than or equal to this one but the same thing is greater than one so i can strictly write greater than one for all m greater than n so what i want to say if you take any two points x and x same the distance is greater than one getting my point so that means if you have any set like this if you take any two points the distance between any two points must be greater than one so if such thing we have we can say the sequence xn has no any convergent subsequence so therefore sequence xn has no any convergent subsequence okay so tell me when we get a convergent subsequence convergent sequence means what convergent sequence that means distance between two points of a sequence is reducing and all points are moving towards a single point the distance is also going to zero between any two successive points getting but what is happening here if you take any two points if you take any two points the distance between any two points cannot be less than one it is always we are getting greater than one so it cannot have any convergent subsequence so therefore i can write therefore a is not sequentially compact a is not sequentially compact since the definition of sequentially compact matrix space is or sequentially compact set is every sequence must have convergent subsequence but here we get a sequence which has no any convergent subsequence and see it is any arbitrary sequence of a so they particularly we have selected some points from a and we got this xn which has no any convergent subsequence therefore a is not sequentially compact but the given information is but a is compact and compact means it is sequentially compact it is sequentially compact getting 
So the given information is set is compact, but in previous videos already we have proved every compact set is sequentially compact. So that's why it is sequentially compact. Here we are saying it is not sequentially compact, but by given information we are getting it is sequentially compact. So we get a, a two opposite sentences. So that's why we say we get a contradiction. So let me mention here, therefore we get a contradiction. So what is the reason behind getting contradiction? The reason is our assumption is wrong. So we get a contradiction. So therefore, therefore our assumption is wrong. What is our assumption? Our assumption is uh, set A is unbounded. Okay, so that is wrong. Therefore, set A is bounded. Assumption is wrong. Let me complete the sentence is wrong. So let me just simply write here. Let us use this space. So assumption is wrong. Therefore, A is bounded. So we started with a contrary uh, by assuming exactly opposite sentence that is uh, we assume that A is unbounded. We did all these things and finally we got a contradiction. So that's why we say our assumption is wrong and we declare A is bounded. So that means actually we discuss two cases. The first is A is finite and the second is A is infinite. In both cases, we got A is a bounded set. So that's why we can declare A is bounded. So just uh, let me mention here, make a screenshot of it, then I will go further. So therefore, I have clearly mentioned from both the cases we get set A is a bounded set. So therefore, every compact subset of a matrix space is bounded. Okay make a screenshot of it, then we will stop. Thank you. See you.